Hey everybody, I hope you had a good first day of e-learning. Um, I wanted to just kind of touch base with you guys a couple uh, for a couple minutes and go over a couple things. Uh, as you can see, I'm hanging out with our, our turtle buddies here. They're hanging out with me. Um, but I wanted to go over a couple things uh, that I noticed from some of the work that you guys did today. Um, the first was the uh, reading passage about, ironically, about endangered sea turtles. Uh, most of you guys did really well. Uh, there were a couple that you guys ran into uh, some problems. Obviously, this was a nonfiction piece. You know, it was talking about real, real life things with these endangered sea turtles and, and, and what they encounter. Um, the most uh, common mistakes that I noticed uh, was the, the sequencing one. Uh, it's just because you know it's it's very slight you got to pay attention to those words it says what do female sea turtles do immediately after they lay their eggs and the key word there is immediately if we go back into the article it says they leave the sea and choose an area on the beach to lay their eggs they dig a pit in the sand fill it with about 130 eggs cover it and then retreat to the sea the eggs are now on their own so a lot of you uh, or some of you put um, the answer of they abandon their eggs and return to the sea which they do they do you know they abandon them and then you know they go to the sea they retreat to the sea and the eggs are on their own so they are abandoning them but remember the question said what do the female turtles uh, do immediately after laying the eggs immediately it talked about how they were they cover them okay now in the answer choices it says they cover their eggs with sand common sense there says they dig a hole in the sand on the beach so they're covering them with sand even though it doesn't say that in the in the actual article it says they lay the eggs 130 eggs cover it then they go back to the sea so you want to make sure that one word immediately really changes uh, what the answer actually is. Um, you did pretty well on most of them. The other one that threw you guys for a loop was the text structure. Now remember, we talked a lot about text structure earlier in the year with Mrs. Ramey. And um, a lot of you got this one incorrect. Okay, now the question again, you have to read the question carefully because it says, What is the text structure of the last two paragraphs? It's not about the whole thing, last two paragraphs. And so, the last two paragraphs talk about um, the, the babies once they are born and they crawl out of that little uh, sand hole that the, the parents buried them in. It says, How do they know where to go? Sea turtles are attracted to light. Before electricity was invented, the brightness, the brightest light was the moonlight reflecting on the sea. Therefore, the hatchlings would simply follow the light and end up in the sea. Unfortunately, things are not as simple anymore. Beaches have become popular places filled with houses, hotels, and condominiums. Even at nighttime, shorelines are well lit. If the lights are on, the hatchlings become very confused and wander inward toward the bright lights. As a result, many die before they find the ocean. Humans must do something to help the sea turtles. One solution is to turn off lights when the beaches uh, where the sea turtles nest. Another solution is to use turtle safe lighting on the beach. These red lights emit less visible light and therefore do not confuse the hatchlings. Uh, execute, uh, executing either of these simple actions could improve the likelihood of survival of sea turtles. Okay, so if you've ever been to a beach, a lot of times where they have turtles, uh, I know when we go to Hilton Head, um, these sea turtles, there's no lights on at the beach at night because that was a problem. The sea turtles were going towards the light. They were going the wrong way, away from the ocean, and they were end up dying. Okay, so the the there on those last two paragraphs, a lot of you put um, cause and effect, and that wouldn't be right because the correct answer was problem and solution because there was a problem. The problem was these babies were being born, they dug out of the sand, and once they dug out of the sand, 
Normally, they would go towards the moonlight, which is over the ocean, towards the sea. The, the problem is with electricity and bright lights, they would get confused, they would go the other way, they would die. So the problem is they were going the wrong way because of lights. Then the next, the last paragraph talks about the solution. The solution was that you either A, don't have lights on the beach, or B, you have red lights because they let, emit less light and so the, they don't confuse the turtles as much. So the text structure of those last two paragraphs is problem and solution, okay? So those are two of the ones uh, that were most missed. So I just wanted to talk about those a little bit. Make sure that, especially on these simple types of things, that you really take your time and you go back. I mean, the, the article is right there and the article is literally one page, okay? And so it's easy to go back, find the answer on those, okay? Uh, so there, that's about the, um, that is all about the, the reading from yesterday. Okay, now on to the math. Uh, most of you guys did a pretty good job. You made a couple simple mistakes and one of them I know was really hard and that's what I was gonna talk about. I was very surprised at um, how many of you missed that first one about the clock and how many times it chimes. Uh, the question said a clock chimes on the hour. So when four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock on the hour, how many times does it chime between 2.15 a.m and 3.15 p.m., okay? So you just think about it, it's pretty simple. 2.15, it's already chimed at two o'clock, so you don't count that. So the first time it's going to chime, remember this is the middle of the night, 2.15 a.m., so it's going to chime at three o'clock. So the first time it's gonna chime is at three o'clock. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock noon, there's 10 chimes. Uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, and then it chimes at three o'clock, okay? And that would be 13 chimes. And when it chimes at three o'clock, it says until 3.15. It's not gonna chime anymore, so your answer would be 13. A lot of you put 12, okay? And so, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you think about these things and that you don't rush through them. Uh, most of you did pretty well on the other ones. The one that was the most complicated would be the, um, the one about Aldo, and he's reading a 600 page book. Okay, 600 pages. So you got 600 pages is the book. Okay, now. He read 80% of the book. How many pages are left? So if he, let's break this down and let's do this simple, okay? 10%, okay? So think, or think about 100, okay? Think about a paper, a test, okay? If you get, um, if there's 100 questions and out of those 100 questions, you get 10 of them right, you have 10% of a grade. Vice versa, you do really well, you get 90 of the questions right, you have a 90%, right? So if you have 100 questions, 10 of those would equal 10%, okay? Now, think about this. He read 80% of the book you want to know what percent he has left now, or how many pages he has left. So we figure out what percent. Out of 100%, he's read 80. 100 minus 80 is 20%, okay? So he still has 20% of the book left, right? 20% of the book is left, okay? So what we need to do is we need to find out what 20% of 600 is. So if we do that, we start to think about this, so it's not that difficult, okay? So if we do 10, because 10% might be easier, if we do 10%, and it's very difficult to hold this 
it's much easier to do on the board in class. 10% of 100 equals 10, okay? So that means 10% of 200 equals 20. 10% of 300 would be 30. 10% of 400, 40. 10% of 500, 50. 10% of 600 is 60, right? Okay, so 10% of 600 would be 60 pages, okay? Now, we know that he has 20% left, okay? If he's got 20% left, we know that 20% is double 10%. So if we know that 10% of 600 equals 60, and we want to double that, 60 times two equals 120. So there would be 120 pages left that Aldo still needs to read because we found out what 20% of 600 is, okay? Now, some of you did it the other way where you may have figured out what 80% was, how many he has read, and then subtracted that from 600, and that works too. So there are multiple different ways to do it, okay? So I just wanted to quickly talk about those couple of questions. Most of you guys did well on the rest of it. Um, let's cover a couple other quick things. Remember, you only need 30 minutes of iReady this week. So go ahead and do that any way you want. A couple of you I know already finished it. So if you finish it, then just go ahead either on Wednesday and Thursday, go ahead and mark that as done So and turn it in just like you normally would. Um, when I look it up, I will know that you have finished it. Um, the doll book. So I did, wasn't quite sure where you guys all were with your doll book. So most of you, in fact, about 21 of you are still reading it, okay? There are about three of you that are finished. Um, so you just keep reading that kind of at your own pace, um, obviously not too slow, but maybe by the end of next week, make sure you try and get that done and then take the AR quiz. Once you are done and you've taken the AR quiz and you should do very well on that AR quiz, some of you may need to go back and reread some of this because it may have been a little while, which is fine because again, you're in no rush right now. Once you have taken your AR quiz, let me know. And then just like I did with, or I said with the iReady, any future assignments with that, just go ahead and mark as done. Let me know that you, you're done. Say you've finished, you've taken the AR quiz and that way I can look it up. But then mark it as done. And then just find a book that you wanna read for enjoyment and then you can read that during that time, okay? Um, as you could see today, the Holes book, I'm still working on that last night after I made that other video. It was gonna be kind of messy, like all these pages, and so I'm gonna still work on that to try and find that. So I figured let's focus on finishing that doll book, and then we'll we'll go from there. So I'll, I'll still work on that. Um, then the other, the other cool thing is um, this flip grid. So today, well not really today, because today is still Tuesday for, for me, but when you guys are watching this, most of you will watch this on Wednesday. On Wednesday, you will uh, follow the links to, to uh, Flipgrid. Now Flipgrid is, is a cool, it's in a cool uh, website where you will be able to make your own video. So tomorrow, or Wednesday, today, whatever day it is you're watching this, you're gonna follow that link, you'll sign on with Google, uh, just like you always do. Um, Tate has already done this, I already watched his video, uh, and he did it successfully, so we know it can be done. Um, and you'll sign on with Google, and you'll just kind of experiment. You guys are all smart with technology, you know what you're doing, you'll figure it out. I can post a question, and in this case, this first one is, hey, 
tell us about your two week your sperm break what'd you do you know obviously i would say did you go anywhere most of you did not go anywhere but you know what kinds of things did you do was that a good break did you have fun did you you know did you cook did you eat what did you do that kind of stuff so once you're able to log in and create an account you'll join it'll join our class and then um you'll see that question it'll say you know your spring break tell us about your spring